Hi, this is Annie with Starting Over Stronger Divorce Survival and Recovery Coaching. And I'm back today to talk to you about high conflict divorce. This is a very hot topic. There are a lot of people looking for information on how to handle divorce when they are leaving someone with a high conflict personality. We've talked about this before on the show, and I'm certain we will talk about it many more times. It's just that prevalent and that important. And the most important thing when you're thinking about how to handle divorce with a difficult personality is really digging deep within yourself to explore where your power is and to know where your boundaries are. You know, difficult divorces have difficult personalities, personalities that are driven by needs and emotions that go beyond what's normal in divorce. Even for someone who's blindsided by divorce, it's above and beyond that. Bill Eddy is a former uh, attorney who actually he may actually be a presently be an attorney, but he's also done a lot of writing work on this very topic, high conflict divorce, uh, specifically involving those with borderline personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder. He's written a book called Splitting, Protecting Yourself While Divorcing Someone with Borderline or Narcissistic Personality Disorder. If this describes you, I would highly recommend you pick up that book and make a lot of notes as you read it. He writes a lot about this because he's got a lot of experience working with clients, attorneys, mental health professionals. And uh, he says difficult and high conflict divorces are mostly the result of many professionals, family and friends working in opposite and sometimes extreme directions. So what his warning is for you as the client who has a spouse with personality disordered traits, whether they've ever been diagnosed is not your concern or your attorney's concern for that matter, because diagnosis isn't the issue. Documenting the behaviors is the issue and dealing with them well is the second part of that. And so, you know, his warning really is that, um, that you and or I as your coach are not in the business of diagnosing and we're not needing to do that for that matter because the patterns of behavior are what is important not only for the outcome of the divorce but for your peace and of mind moving forward um, people with high toxic personalities are blamers. They're driven by false alarms and cognitive distortions. They can be physically, verbally, and legally abusive in their efforts to keep power and control. And the reason is because they feel so chronically out of control in their own lives. So, it, it, you know, if you're facing that, it's possible that this is having an impact significantly on your divorce. So uh, some things to look for. Um, it's, uh, surprisingly, getting feedback from people around the world, we see the same patterns of behaviors play out in courtrooms across America. I have often said this to my clients. It's uncanny how much similarity there is in the actions of people with these personality disorder traits. It's like somebody out there has written a textbook on how to be a high conflict personality. And I mean, down to the actual language that they use. It's just sometimes kind of unbelievable how much similarity there is. And you know, divorce isn't really high conflict because of legal issues. It's high conflict because of difficult personalities. The legal process of severing a marriage is not complicated. 
it's made complicated by these personality traits. And one way that these are often uh, exhibited is in what John Gottman describes as the four horsemen, which are criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. And so, you know, you want to be aware of those things, not only in your partner, but frankly, in yourself. Because sometimes after years of repeating this pattern with someone, you almost kind of like, what's that old saying? If you can't beat them, join them. I don't think anybody does it intentionally, but I think we, we sink to that sometimes just out of desperation and confusion. And then, of course, you know, there, there could be people who display some of these patterns that aren't actually labeled as personality disorders, and you can't necessarily distinguish the two or know whether a diagnosis of an official personality disorder is warranted. But again, it doesn't really matter because what matters to you and to the legal process and to the judge that's going to sign off on your divorce is the behaviors. So your best bet is to document those behaviors. And so before we get into that, let's talk about your approach. It is very common to feel very defensive when we are being attacked. So it's whether that's a physical attack or even a verbal attack, it's, it's a universally known defense mechanism. And so just be aware that uh, you can definitely sink to that sometimes when you're stressed out and being accused of things that aren't true and being told things that aren't true. So what you want to think about in your approach is being assertive, but not aggressive. And if you don't understand the difference between those two, You want to study that and really explore. Use a journal. Write your thoughts and feelings. Hire a coach. Talk with a friend. Talk with your attorney. Do whatever you have to do to get a really, really clear idea going forward in your divorce as to the difference between being assertive and being aggressive. You know, an assertive approach is... It, it, it just is actively learning about the personality problems and cultivating energy for dealing with them without getting sucked into the drama. It's documenting events, what happened, what was said, who was there, where were you. When I tell you, which you'll hear me say a hundred times, you need a journal, a divorce journal, you, it's invaluable. Document everything that happens, not only with your soon-to-be ex, but with your attorney and with any other experts that you bring in. Just grab a spiral notebook and have it with you at all times and document everything that happens. You will be glad you did because honestly, it's hard to remember everything as you're going through this. And then actively presenting the information that you learn from all of these encounters to the legal professionals or the court, uh, whichever is appropriate in your situation. On the other side of that coin is aggression, which would be, you know, acting aggressively. Um, Basically, it's just kind of replicating back to an aggressive person what they're giving to you. Uh, Verbal assault, accusations, argumenting, argumentation. It's perfectly understandable and normal for you to feel like responding aggressively when someone's acting aggressively towards you. Uh, You're trying to eliminate your partner from your life. And so, you know, you want to trash them if they're going to trash you. This is understandable. But it is a huge mistake, and it regularly backfires on you in court. So, you know, you the, the reason why, obviously, is because legal professionals, including the judge, may very well see you as either an equal 
part of the problem, or maybe even the primary problem, if the other party is very skilled at being manipulative and charming people, which often they are. So you definitely want to avoid engaging in any misbehavior. And that may require that you have zero contact with them. And in fact, if it's a contested divorce, it's really better that you don't anyway. You each have your own attorney. Anything that needs to be discussed should be discussed between the attorneys. So you want to really pull back, I guess is what I'm saying. You are going to feel intensity about interactions, but you don't have to act on those. So be aware of that. And then, you know, the other thing to think about is just some some steps that you're going to want to take. There's another book by Bill Eddy, same same author I talked about earlier. This one's called High Conflict People in Legal Disputes. And he actually offers 20 strategies for dealing with high conflict personalities. I'm not going to go through all of those, but I am going to talk about some of the more important ones. One is, and, and this is number one for a reason, find an attorney who is not a narcissist. And I know your next question is, how am I supposed to tell that, right? And if you're empathic at all, you're divorcing a narcissist, you attract narcissists and you are attracted to them. So it's very easy to find yourself in a situation where you get sucked into a situation with an attorney who is more or less just like your ex. So that is something you definitely want to know and think about in advance. And one way that you can tell is that narcissists have very little empathy for people who are victimized, especially in a marriage. So if your attorney seems apathetic to your issues and you find them maybe defending your spouse more than supporting you, that's a red flag that they are ultimately going to more or less view you as pathetic and do very little to fight on your behalf. So be aware of that. And my recommendation always is to interview at least three attorneys before you hire one. And don't just hire one because they get good Google reviews or because they're cheap or because your friend who had an uncontested simple divorce says that they're great. You are in a very different situation. You cannot take that same conf- that same approach to selecting an attorney. Uh, number two is to, before you hit the go button on your divorce, you probably want to set up your own bank account if you don't already have one. Uh, create one that has enough money to pay for divorce the attorney's fees and other divorce expenses. And when the divorce process begins, be prepared for your high conflict personality spouse to move money and claim there is none to give you. Uh, Third is become your own forensic analyst. Get copies of everything, past bank statements, bank account numbers, copies of past tax returns. You can get these very easily online. Investigate your shared computer records. Have passwords for everything. Create your own login for these different institutions and accounts. Um, You know, make copies from your file cabinet if you still have paper files. If you need to protect yourself financially, you have to be very, I want to say calculated, but I don't want that to come across negative because you're not doing anything wrong. You're being very careful to get all of the information that you need before you need it or before you're in a situation that you can no longer access it. Number four is define what winning is for you. Because I'll tell you what, fighting over assets in a divorce is an uphill battle that is never won. And really the only way to get out of divorce is to to get out of divorce a, a, as a winner is to not go into it with a fighting attitude. And the other side of that coin is the exact opposite 
which is to just be so done that you refuse to fight for anything. Neither of these are good approaches. So you want to have a balanced perspective on what winning would mean for you. I mean, I've seen a narcissist be willing to go completely bankrupt and put themselves in a place of unemployability for a period of time just to destroy someone. You have to be able to separate yourself a little bit from the disorder, to step outside of your emotions, to objectively look at the situation and come to a conclusion about what you can actually feel good about settling. If you remember that the focal point for the injury psychologically for the other party is a fear of abandonment and a threat to their self-worth, you will be well prepared for the battle ahead of you. Because the key is to not respond emotionally and let it drain you. Instead, observe, but don't absorb, which just means that you don't take these situations as personal attacks on you or observing their behavior as somehow personal to you, but you recognize that they are acting the way they are because of who they are and their own issues. And distancing yourself from that is critical. So I hope that some of these uh, steps have been helpful for you. Of course, we will continue to talk about this. This is unfortunately a huge topic in our world today, and it's not going away anytime soon. So we are going to keep talking about what you need to do to protect yourself when you are divorcing someone with a high conflict personality. So stay tuned. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this was helpful. If you would like more information about getting the support of a divorce coach through your high conflict divorce, please go to startingoverstronger.com. Book a complimentary discovery call. We'll take 30 or 45 minutes and talk about your situation and how coaching can be helpful for you. And you can, whether or not you choose to work with a coach going forward, you will leave that call with a really good idea about what your next best step is with your current dilemma, whatever that is. So it's worth your time no matter what. And if there's any way to make it work for you financially, which to be honest, there really always is. Because you know, you've hired an attorney to handle the legal matters, and you figured out a way to afford that. And you like many other women will figure out a way to work out the financial arrangements with a coach when you realize the value of having somebody who understands the divorce process, understands the the high conflict personality and knows how to help you navigate through this, not to tell you what to do, because you're the expert on you, but to help you to hold ha your hand to guide you a little bit and just to be that thinking partner for you as you go through this really difficult transition. That's what I'm here for. So thank you for taking some time out today to look at what you can do in a high conflict divorce situation. There's much more where this came from. So stay tuned. Thanks so much and have a great day. Hang in there.